bass clarinet reeds present a slightly different problem than clarinet reeds, not major. As, as I've mentioned in another segment, the xylems in a bass clarinet reed are further apart than they are in a B-flat clarinet reed, meaning there's more phloem, the softer material, in between. For that reason, bass clarinet reeds actually will warp a little more quickly than clarinet reeds. So we have to be very careful in the break-in process. What I found works for me is to use a case that has a flat surface. In, in this case, I'm using, it's, it's actually glass. Uh, you can use plexiglass, but, but make sure it's thick enough plexiglass that it doesn't waver, that it is actually flat. What I'm attempting to do with my reeds as I break them in is I will try them right out of the box, play them a little bit if they're, if they're comfortable, and not overplay them. You avoid going into your band rehearsal and taking out a reed and playing it because as soon as the conductor start, starts talking, you can bet your reed is working. So I try to break in my reeds at least a week before I start using them in rehearsals or concerts. After I played them a little while, I will make sure it's good and wet, place it on the glass, and apply pressure. In this case, it's a case that, that closes onto it. Rico has brought out this new pack for a clarinet, and they will soon have the bass clarinet version. And this is going to do exactly what I'm after. It puts the reed on a flat surface, closes it, They've included the reed vitalizer in the pack, which is going to help slow the drying process. That's what we're after. If the reed dries very quickly, it will warp in a way that would warp away from the table of the mouthpiece. We want it to flatten to that glass. If it dries slowly, it will do that. Because in both these cases, the reed is under pressure, being pressed down as it dries, it will tend to flatten to that flat surface. The worst thing we can do is take a reed, play it, and let it dry out. That's why I don't want it there while my music director is talking. Fascinating as their lecture will be, I don't want my reed drying out. One other practical thing that I will point out if you're starting to play clarinet and bass clarinet, as you go, if you're playing a piece where you have to go back and forth on the same piece, I would suggest to you that you'll have greater success if you look for reeds that are just a little bit lighter than you optimally might like. If you were playing a symphony where you have just bass clarinet, you might choose a reed a little harder. But if you're now playing a piece that has clarinet and bass clarinet, take a reed that's slightly lighter for each instrument. Why? Because while you put down the bass and play the clarinet, that reed is tending to dry out a bit. When you pick up the bass and put down the clarinet, now that reed is drying. When you pick them up, they're going to feel a little bit harder than when you put them down. For the same reason, utilize your mouthpiece cap as often as you can. I know there's plenty of pieces. I've played all the Bartok pieces where you go back and forth constantly and there's not time to get those mouthpiece caps on. But particularly in winter and the heat is dry, Try to use that mouthpiece cap and you're just going to increase the number of reads that are working for you.